Hey everybody, it's white to play in this position. We are doing a retrieval practice. I'll show you in this position before at some point. Please take your time and try to find the best move for white. We are talking about cognitive biases, explaining our chess mistakes today. We are continuing our series on this. Today, we talk about the Einstellung effect. It sounds like a crazy complex term. It's a German term. It basically means mental set effect. It's about those mental patterns that we learned before that are getting in the way, stopping us from finding the very best move, right? Chess is about pattern recognition. For example, here, I'm sure many of you have seen this beautiful rooks on the seventh rank pattern, folks. And this is really a pattern that is getting in the way for you, stopping you to find the right solution, right? Because the right solution is, can you tell me? Yes, rook h1 is a great solution because black has no defense against rook h8 mate, right? It's as simple as that. Here, it's more difficult to find this move because of the availability and the presence of this much more typical and strong looking solution, rook d7, right? This, this example perfectly illustrates what we mean by an Einstein effect, mental set effect, that are sometimes forcing us, right, to close our mind to other options, stronger options in chess. Here is another position, folks. It's a very nice example as well. It's white to play. I want you to stop the video again and try to find a nice <clears throat> continuation for white. How would you treat this position? What are you seeing? That's the most important thing for me. And how should white play? Folks, you're a great player if you instantly understood that there is this d5 outpost in the position, right? You understand this from the pawn structure. No black pawn can guard this square. Thus, white wants to use that square, ideally, for his pieces. Ideally, the knight outpost, right? Imagine an eternal knight on d5 sitting on that square. So I'm sure many of you, the first choice was this. Bishop f6, bishop f6, and knight d5, right? This pattern is screaming to be played. I'm sure you've seen similar patterns before in your life, right? Take the knight, get, get your knight to d5, and take it from there, right? But in this case, after bishop d8, your advantage is only minimal. Very slight advantage for white, but by playing this way, you're missing out on a much stronger continuation. And can you please stop the video again and find that continuation? You're a great player, folks, if you directly jump to d5. It looks ridiculous at first sight. Why are we trading off our attacking knight for a defensive knight? But chess is a very concrete game, right? Once you look a little bit deeper after takes, how do you recapture? Of course, bishop takes, and suddenly, right, we are having a double threat on the board. The first threat is the hanging bishop on e7. The second threat is take on b7, and we win the exchange, right? For example, yeah, black cannot pair them both. Bishop g5, bishop takes b7, and white is gaining material. It's a beautiful example, folks. Just going back, I want to show this position to you again. Shows us, you know, concrete nature of chess should array those typical patterns and general principles. Obviously, b knight d5 output is a beautiful strategic idea, right? But just because we have this idea doesn't mean that we should always go for it, right? We should always try to be flexible, search for other options. And here you also understand calculation becomes very important in chess, right? The skill of calculating move sequences here it's a very concrete phase right bishop takes d5 and if knight c6 doesn't really work because we first take this knight right removing the guard and then we will take on e7 so concretely this position is very very bad for black and surprising looking surprising looking knight e5 turns out to be the best move folks i will show you a couple of positions from a scientific study that investigated the Einstein effect using chess positions. It's white to play in this position. Please take your time and find the shortest possible finish for white. Shortest possible solution for white. That's the key question. Okay, so I will show you what I think many of you have found. Okay, queen e6 check, king h8, and here the pattern recognition the smothered mate, right? I'm sure many of you have seen this directly. Check, double check, 
Beautiful check, right? This smother made pattern is one of the most beautiful checkmate patterns in chess. And I'm sure many of you know this. It's in your mental set, right? This pattern of the smothered mate. I'm sure this just popped to you directly from this position, okay? Keep that in mind because this study gave this position to super grandmasters, grandmasters, international masters, candidate masters. And there was a great skill difference. Now, if I show you this position instead, what would you say? It's almost the same position, except there's a bishop on h5. Again, we are searching for the shortest possible finish for white. Please stop the video, take your time, and find a forcing mate from this position. You're a great player, folks. If you came up with queen e6 check, king h8 is the only move, right? Because if king f8, this is mate. King h8 is the only move. Let's continue. What is the next move here, folks? Because here, your smothered mate pattern no longer works. So you have to rely on some other resource in this position. You have to open up your mind for this possibility of queen h6. A beautiful move using this pin and hitting those two points, creating two different checkmate in one threats, right? Queen takes g7 is mate, queen takes h7 is mate, and black cannot pair them both. White mates on the next move. Let's say after d4, queen h7 is mate. Beautiful. Going back to this position, folks. That's the initial position. Queen e6, king h8, queen h6, and white gives mate on the next move. This position was easier for lots of masters, from candidate masters, tennis masters, to calculate. Why? Why? Because you can no longer rely on this pattern, right? Smothered mate pattern. This is out of the picture, so people looked for different resources, and most of them found this solution. Now comes the interesting part. I'm bringing you to this position, guys. The first position in this study, right? Queen e6 check, king h8. Please be honest with me. Have you seen in the initial position this shortest solution directly? Then you're a great player, because in this study, only super grandmasters, the strongest players, were able to see this shorter solution. Interesting, right? Grandmasters have this flexibility to find those other resources that goes against the patterns that they knew as kids, right? This mother made pattern. They were flexible enough to look for alternative solutions. And that's a whole different solution, right? It has nothing to do with this mother made. That's a whole different mating pattern that you're using in this case. So you have to open up your mind to different ideas mental set effect or Einstellung effect was preventing many players, including candidate masters, almost no candidate master could find this shorter solution in this puzzle. I'm a candidate master myself, guys, right? Maybe I would also fail in this case, despite the researchers told them to find the shortest possible solution from this position, right? So maybe grandmasters thought there was something suspicious, right? They, they, they smell something in the position and they could find this uh, much shorter solution already here before looking at the other position, right? The second position I show you here. Because here it's easy. The bishop is stopping you from exiting this mate. So you have to look for alternative solutions. And this was easier for many, many players in that study. This has ramifications for large ramifications. For example, masters, right? Experts. As you grow stronger in the field, your flexibility is increasing because only those super grandmasters were able to find those shorter solutions, right? Guys, Einstein effect has effects on different parts of the game. For example, I will show you a game between Kasparov and Kasim Shanov in a rapid game. In this position, black player went bishop d6 and Gary Kasparov probably just thought that this was a regular move, right? Black is stopping d6 and black is developing the bishop, getting ready for casting short. And great Gary Kasparov just castled short in this position and allowed, can you tell me which move? He allowed black to make this move and winning the rook directly. Black is a winning position. But Kasim Shanov, a great player himself, he didn't play this move and he castled short in this case. Incredible double blindness happened in this actual rapid game. And to my mind, one of the explanations, surely, that both players just perceive this move as a typical move 
that belong on this pattern, on this team, that you develop the bishop, you blockade this pass pawn, and you take it from there, right? None of the players could see that this move actually created a devastating threat of bishop e5. To fight against these tendencies, I created a chessable course recently, my opponent's last move, which trains you to automa automatize this process of always checking for the next move by the opponent, whichever move they make. No matter what kind of move it looks like for the opponent, you have to automatize this process of checking whether you're facing a threat right now, right? That's always the first question. You see a move, the question is, what would they do if I don't make a move right now, right? So these questions can reduce this kind of blindness that even Gary Kasparov fell for, guys. And I will leave you guys with this homework position. This position came from one of my games with white pieces. We are searching for a great move for white here. And that's a beautiful position because I'm sure many of you spotted a nice looking tactical resource. But I will challenge you, right? I will challenge you maybe to find a better resource to get rid of those patterns that are getting in the way, to look for other solutions, open your mind for other possibilities, and please find a great move for white in this position. This is also a nice example to finish because you see this has ramifications in mating patterns, seeing the opponent's moves in the opening phase, middle game, but also when it comes to tactics, those tactical patterns, which I'm sure so many of you know, sometimes can get in the way of you to find other and nicer solutions. It doesn't mean that we should stop learning patterns. Obviously, chess is mostly a game of pattern recognition. We must learn those patterns, obviously, but chess is a beautiful game that sometimes contradicts, right? Or sometimes we need to go through and be more flexible to, to look for nicer solutions and not let those patterns get in the way. Super grandmasters could do that nicely than other players. And that's an interesting result in itself that has ramifications in different parts of cognitive science. If you like this video, folks, please give me a like and subscribe. That's very important for me to keep producing such content. And you can always check my chessable courses, especially the latest one, the opponent's last move, that can tackle this problem. Plus, obviously, my course on calculation that trains for broader search of the candidate moves on the very first move. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.